Hey guys, um, we're back to working on this uh, H76 twin. Uh, I did put new rings in it. Here are the old ones. And uh, cleaned our pistons up, you know, and uh, put our cylinder liners back in. And rods are bolted back down. And yeah, we still have that crazy noise. But we're just going to run with it. So, uh, not, didn't figure you guys needed to see how, you know, these went back in. You see me take it apart goes back together the same way but I'm going to uh, pull these valves out and uh, I'll show you guys you know how I do it and you know on a real engine you know a full-size one you have that silly ass cup with a suction cup on the end of there and you know rub the stick back and forth well that works but can you imagine trying to find a suction cup that would fit that valve right there I mean, hell, they're smaller than a pencil. So I'll get these uh, head studs out of here, or head bolts, and get these valves pulled out. I'll show you guys how I do it, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, we got the exhaust valve off and out. So the intake is ready to come off and come out. And we're going to look at these. I don't know. Let me wipe it off and see if it'll show up a little bit better for you. But... Can you guys see how that seat sticks up on these and really not on this side? I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but we're going to investigate as to what the heck's going on with that. And, uh, but, okay, when it comes to doing these valves, I'm going to wipe it all off and make sure it's clean. Keep them, you know, intake with intake so they fit in there and yes you can get your thumb and push up against it you know and twist it back and forth but what we're going to use for lapping compound is just colgate toothpaste it's good enough to keep your teeth shiny and it's not going to be overly abrasive and dig in so let's get it on the face of your valve shove it up to the seat and take a piece of fuel line that just fits over that valve stem and then there you can sit there and turn it back and forth and pull on it and lap your valves that way there. so yeah you don't have to keep pushing you can pull on that and it works out really well and if you are lucky enough you've got plenty of room how i normally do it is i'll take one of those uh oh uh a real a micro sized drill bit chuck you know for the very small like orifice drills and you got plenty of room to do them one at a time and grab right a hold of it and just spin that back and forth by hand that works a lot better than this but if you don't have one fuel line will work get these valves lapped in well we've got our valves lapped back in everything's reassembled we didn't lose any parts so that makes me happy let's uh spin this little model around and uh we'll bolt these back on and remember i said we're gonna flop this manifold and turn it the other way well this carburetor threads down on there so you know i don't think we're gonna get another half turn out of it it's brass on brass we'll just end up screwing them threads up so we'll get this pair of cylinder heads mounted back onto our cylinder liners and uh yeah, we'll flip that around. See you guys in a second. Oh, well, just like that, the heads are back on. Let's pull this manifold off. We'll flip it around so our throttle will be back here and our fuel inlet will be on this side. Like I said, this one is threaded on there, but yeah, that's probably just inviting problems. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really terribly happy with this engine. I don't know if you guys can tell, but yeah. We'll get it to where it'll run, and I don't know what we're going to do with it, but it'll probably sit on the shelf and probably won't get much use. So, all right, flip this around. Okay, the manifold is off, and when I pulled it off, it was sealed with O-rings. Well, I've got these on there now, but these O-rings have swollen up to the point where they're not going to fit back down in there. So I don't know if that was causing a vacuum leak 
or what but yeah i guess just one more thing that once again they are about 70 percent ready to go and there's no reason why we should have to be doing this to a new engine but i guess we own it so let's fix his mistakes all right let's get this intake bolted back on all right well we got our carburetor on we still got to put our rockers on here and everything but one thing i did notice is that this fuel line will reach but i don't know if that's going to be the best placement for it or not we do have room so i think what i'm going to do is take the bands off of our fuel tank strap here flip the tank around so our outlets up here in the front and that'll give us a little bit more clearance to get it away from the rockers up front so i'll get that flipped around we'll get our rockers on here and see if this little turd will actually run and fire on both cylinders so i'll get that flipped around we'll be back and work on them we got our fuel tank flopped around we'll get our uh, rocker assemblies put back on and now that uh, you guys can see the little groove right there but they're retained by a snap ring so we can get these here to slide back in just like that maybe there just like that We'll get our snap ring on, do the same thing to the other side, and then uh, put our push rods in, and I've got to fight to put this hose on. That was a dumb oversight. I should have done it when I had these heads off because there isn't a whole heck of a lot of room, but hell, we'll get it. So, all right, I'll get the other side on, get the push rods back in, and uh, I guess we're ready to uh, give it a test fire. If it does actually run, then we'll hook our cooling system back up, and we'll see how it does. So. all right well we got both of our rockers assemblies back on and uh i guess we're gonna take these and we have them laid out just the way they came off we're gonna see if anything changed on our rocker clearance from lapping them valves in so we'll see what we've got yeah that's got a hell of a lot of slop in it so we're gonna have to adjust that one we're gonna check the rest of these we're probably gonna end up having to adjust all of them sorry you guys my hands are gonna be right in your way but all right well hell you saw me put that one in so i'll do the same thing with the rest of them we'll check and see yeah look at look at how much slop we've got yeah so all right i'll get the other ones put in and i'll go through and adjust them I did get this uh, water line hooked back up, so I guess we'll see if it runs, and if it does, well, we'll uh, hook the cooling system up to it and see what it'll do when we get to it. So I went through and adjusted all the valves, and uh, it sounds decent, so yeah, I guess... We'll get this fuel line hooked back up. We'll see where this is going to want to ride. We'll nip a little bit off of the end of this. And uh, I'll put some fuel in it. We'll hook our plug wires back up. And uh, let's see if this engine can redeem itself or if we have to get something else out after it. So I guess we'll, uh, we'll all find out here in a second, won't we, guys? This fuel line. Man, I'll tell you what. Urgh. Frustrating little engine, guys. You get it hooked up. Okay, well, sorry about the goofy angle, but we're going to do this all in one shot. And at least if I put this over here, well, I won't be smacking you guys with the drill. So, 40 to 1 VP, same thing we always use. Fill up our tank. Wishful thinking, right? Full tank fuel. Okay, all right, we'll get our cap back on, we'll get our drill start attachment, we'll stick it in the drill, and uh, hopefully this thing will actually bark to life and run on two cylinders for, well, longer than a little bit. So, yeah, and I don't know, guys, I don't know if this was just one that was built, you know, on like a Friday or a Monday, but I don't know, I'm just, I was not happy with this one at all. Uh, it's a neat engine, I like how it's built. But I wish they would spend a little bit more time on quality control and 
when you buy something, if you bought a brand new Briggs and Stratton or a, uh, a Honda, you know, and you had these problems, how long would they stay in business? You know, I guess I'm just rambling. Let's see if this damn thing will start. So, the switch is in the on position. We're at low speed. Sounded like it might have fired. Sounds like two cylinders. again I guess Isn't that great guys it runs perfect we still have our clearance on our valves so that didn't tighten up great all right well i guess i will dig back into it we'll pull the plug and see which one is dead so okay okay well i can't say that our efforts were all for naught because last time, it was this cylinder that was giving us fits. Now, it's this one, this time. So, I pulled the plug, and it looked like it was covered in schmoo and crud. And I can't understand, because we have no water in here. So, let's give it another go. If it'll start. The switch is on. We get this cooling jacket or uh sorry guys not a cooling jacket but our water hopper put back on we'll get our uh, water pump hooked back up and i'll sit here and run this thing who knows maybe it's better maybe it's just hiding the further symptoms who will have to get something out and polish it <laughs> all right get this bolted back down okay water hopper is back on i don't know if you guys can see but you know, we're full full but we haven't fired it up and ran it through our engine so switch back on throttles right where we left it 
Let's fire this little thing up. We'll hopefully fire this thing back up. Coolant level's dropping. fuel yet. But we are pouring water out of the bottom of it. Oh, this is fantastic. All right, guys. Well, this was a, uh, yeah. see it down here. Great. Wonderful. Well, shit guys, I guess, uh, we'll call this a video. The outcome was much less than amazing, but, well, you can't win them all, can you? I guess we'll, uh, <laughs> I won't subject you guys to this, but, well, damn it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I guess it is what it is, but I don't like that saying, but well, what can you say? I mean, this is, this is exactly what it is right now, so we'll make it right i guess i'll tear back into it and uh had it running good until we put coolant in it so all right well leave me a comment down below what do you think we ought to do about this and uh what do you guys want to see next um might bring that little uh oh that engine more engine back up i did get the cart made for it so maybe we'll bring that guy up here next finish that finally so when we set it on the shelf we know that it's done and uh maybe get back on the economy or that stewart 7a we got some other stuff laying around here so let me know all right guys well hey sorry about the outcome on this one but yeah you guys aren't near as upset with this as i am so all right thanks guys we'll see you guys in a day or so bye